Hello everyone, my name is Abhishek and I have been exploring this research question which is how can we learn to write program code and documentation that are enjoyable to read, easy to understand and easy to maintain. In this talk I will introduce the concept of software resurrection as a way to address this research question. The software resurrection exercise starts by building and testing a historical software release on a modern hardware and software platform. Any issues encountered during compilation and testing has to be fixed by the learner. The exercise concludes by reflecting on the experiences and then writing a critique about it. Let us see an example of the software resurrection exercise based on the SQLI database engine that was released 20 years ago. As we build the source, we encounter these two issues. So the first issue is caused by compilers dropping support for certain header files. And the second issue is caused by conflict in the identifier names used in the standard library and in the SQLI database engine. Now both these changes were introduced after the release of the SQLI database engine 20 years ago. After fixing all the build issues, we move on to the testing stage where we use the test suite that was included in the original software release. We encounter these three issues during testing where the first two issues are caused by a software dependency library of the test suite and the third issue is caused by a failing test. After fixing all the test issues, we move on to the next stage where we critically reflect about our experiences. Now we had these experiences because the hardware and the software platform have changed dramatically in the last 20 years. Let us see an example of how a failing test contributes to learning. So in order to understand the reasons for a failing test, the learner must explore relevant parts of the source code as well as understand the documentation. Good documentation and well commented out code as shown here and in this slide, it helps the learner to easily pinpoint the reasons for a failing test. Our investigation shows that this failing test is caused by a test suit that is still living in a 32-bit world, whereas modern computers use 64 bits to store the address of a memory location. From this failing test, we learn that if a test suit is relatively complex, then it will demand a test suit for itself, leading to a recursive dilemma. Therefore, we should prefer a simpler test suit. The software resurrection exercise has helped me grow as a software developer. But you may wonder why this seemingly pointless activity of resurrecting a historical software should have any value as a learning tool. I have found answers to this question in the following two avenues. So first, let us look at how philosophy can help us understand the value of software resurrection as a learning tool. Most of our life experiences and perspectives are constrained by the time in which we live. In an essay written in 1956, Burton Russell described wisdom as essentially a process of breaking free from these constraints. The software resurrection exercise enables a learner to view things from different perspective by introducing them to program code and documentation that are remote in time. The learner, therefore, is no longer captive of their personal viewpoints or the constraints of their time. Thereby, they become capable of surveying a wider horizon of ideas. This, in turn, contributes to growth in their wisdom. So that was philosophy helping us understand the value of software resurrection as a learning tool. Now let us look into experiential learning theory, which describes these four stages as being a critical part of learning from experience. The software resurrection exercise takes a learner through all these four stages and allows them to actively explore the experiences of maintaining a software. Software resurrection exercise can be adapted for large-scale training and education programs by providing a checklist of all the issues that can be encountered in, a, in an exercise or by providing tips and pointers for further exploration and finally, providing a template for writing a critique for students who feel a need for such a template. Let us revisit the research question that was posed at the beginning of this talk. We now understand that engaging with program code and documentation that are remote in time or space helps learner experience the pain and joy of software maintenance. 
These experiences shows the factors that contribute to readability, intelligibility, and maintainability of a program code and documentation. Let us conclude this talk with this wonderful quote from Harper Lee, which says that you never really understand a person until you consider things from his point of view, until you climb into his skin and walk around in it. I have adapted it to software engineering as follows. You never really understand software engineering until you consider things from software maintainer's point of view, until you climb into the skin of a software maintainer and walk around in it. Thank you very much. I look forward to your questions and advice.